Welcome everyone to the big reveal. I hope you're as excited as we are to show off our project we've been working on for the last few months. Um, but before we get started here, I just want to go ahead and thank uh, some sponsors here who have uh, contributed generously to our project. So let's go ahead and get started with that. First up, I'd like to thank the big equipment company in Haver, Montana. These guys are home to Big Bud tractors. Um, they gave us an authentic Big Bud hood, so you just can't go wrong with that. That's pretty amazing. Next up, I would like to thank Triangle Egg Services from Fort Benton, Montana. These guys set us up with an awesome Trimble GPS guidance system. Can't wait to use it. We're looking forward to it. It's pretty sweet. And last but not least, Larson Lights out of Minnesota sent us several HP 6 Thomas LED lights. These things are great. They're super bright, and uh, we love them. We have to admit something to you guys, though. This wasn't our original idea to use a floater truck for a sprayer. As you can see in this picture here, this is a floater truck. It's a tiler that was converted into a sprayer by the Wall Farms. They're friends of ours, and they've actually built two of these. Uh, one's a 4375, just like ours, just a couple years older, and one's another model that's just quite a bit older than that. But they love them a lot. They're 100-foot booms. They've got over 2,000-gallon capacity. So we decided we should do the same thing. But typical for us, we like to do things a little different. So as you can see in these pictures, this is the combination we use to build this sprayer. We've got a 2001 Case Titan FLX 4375 <clears throat> and uh, early 1980s Series 3 Big Bud Hood authentic donated by a big equipment company and then we have a new holland s1070 it's a 2009 sprayer so we're going to take all three of these as you guys have been watching the last few months and we're going to make something big out of it so with that said i think it's about time Okay, there we go. Is it working? Yep, yeah, got sound. Woo! Sounds good. <laughs> okay, we got sound. All right, let's start over. Okay, Nick Welker here. I'm one of the sons on Welker Farms. Um, my brother is uh, Scott Welker, and uh, his nickname is Leg Arms. My nickname is Hollywood. Uh, my dad doesn't have a nickname yet. His name's Bob. Um, you guys are all here because we've been working on a project for a long time here. No sound, Nick. Can you guys get sound now? Yay. Okay, good. I Sorry, I didn't have it switched. I'm still learning this app. So, <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, it's been a long day coming. We started this project back in January, but we were acquiring stuff even before that. Many of you guys have been with us for a while. We appreciate that. Uh, today is a big day for us uh, to show this off. We're just as excited as I think you guys are. More or less nervous too. I'm shaking right now, but fortunately for you guys, I got a steady cam. Let's see if you guys can see it. There it is right there. So uh, we'll see if this works. This is a new thing I got too, so the video quality should be really smooth. So anyways, I hope you guys like the intro. That kind of give a little idea of what, where we're at as far as uh, um, sponsors and where we came from and everything. I'll show you guys real quick here. We've got uh, some friends that showed up. Sorry, I'm trying to switch the video. There we go. We've got some friends that showed up that want to witness today. Say hello to the family. We've got the Series 2 KTA 525. We've got the Series 1 uh, uh, N14 435. And the Series 3, which is a 525-50, but it's really a 600 horsepower. So that one's yet to be worked on. So what are you guys, you ready for this? Should we uh, should we start this uh, start this thing up and show you guys what we got? Let's uh, let's switch my camera here. Okay, so you can see the camera right here. I'm gonna hold it down. I'm gonna tip it forward like this, so you guys don't have to see that. There, there we go. Perfect. All right. Well, let's get this off. Let's do it. You guys ready for this?
especially the big brood. I want you guys to listen to it. <laughs> what is leg arms up to? Oh, look at that. You just see what I saw? The booms move. Oh boy, let's go from the side here. foot boom. This is the New Holland S1070. We've never had to weld on this boom. Out of all the years we've operated it, there's never been a crack. So it goes to show the engineers. I guess I take that back. There was a the very end of it that we had to fix a hinge on. But overall, we've never had to weld on it. A lot of booms you do. It just shows the engineering on this. Tell you how excited I am, guys. This is uh, this has been a long time coming. All that weight is hanging right here on these four. Isn't that amazing? There we go. How is it, guys? There's leg arms. <laughs> That's Yay! about his second time driving the thing. <laughs> Actually, let's see. Third time. First time I took it out, parked it for his first intro. Second time was parked it to the booms to hook on. And this is the third time. <laughs> so we're doing pretty good. Yeah. So the name, Big Brute. I know you guys gave us a lot of input. It wasn't that we didn't like your guys' ideas. It's just that... We just sat there, we kept thinking it over and thinking it over and thinking it over, like, what should we name this thing? What should we name this thing? And we kept saying it over and over again. Does this fit? Does this fit? We wanted something that had BB, Big Bud. We wanted a BB, but we wanted a short second name. And that was the problem. What do we do for the second name? And so we're like, should we call it Big, Big so Bob, Big? We went to Canada to go to a farm show and we found out that we were a day late. So we get up there and nothing was going on. And, uh, on the way back, we were trying to decide what uh, what to name it, and Nick came up with a name. And then, uh, thanks to uh, my lovely wife, she uh, she designed the logo or the lettering for it. Um, the font was completely different than anything else, so she had to design the R and the U and the E and T, and so she did all that. And uh, yeah, yeah. And then, of course, the logo she made that too. And um, that's a that's a magnet right there. <clears throat> They're really nice. They just stick right on. We'll see how long it lasts, but it's worth a shot trying. I searched it. Oh, my gimbal's messing up. There we go. Hang on. My gimbal's... Oh, there. Okay, it's back. Um, so we... Uh, I searched databases of over 200 fonts by inputting the Big Bud logo, and nothing came up close. So it was a custom font done by Big, Big Bud. Um, this decals on this hood right here match what that hood was before. The only, the only thing that's different is the numbers... 425, 100, 425 stands for the maximum horsepower this engine can put out. The 100 stands for the 100 foot boom. That was actually your guys' ideas. Thanks for that. So, uh, what do you guys think? You think we did okay? I, w I wish we could hear you guys. Well, 
one thing uh, we'll know when we get out in the field and see how it works, but we can't really do that. It's still a little soupy, so. I might get in one field. I know one spot that's a little dry. We'll go for a drive in a little bit. Well, we might have to tow it out. You never know. <laughs> I actually almost <laughs> got it stuck. I actually did. I drove off the road in one spot and just about got the back stuck, but it crawled through it. These decals were just some vinyl that I ordered. Uh, they uh, came in rolls and we cut them all out by hand. We didn't do these. These were sent to us by uh, Florence Printing and Haver. Um, but all of the the decals like those up there and how we did those is we took black we laid black down cut squares like like this one right here and then we cut a smaller version of that in red and laid it on top of it so we had to do that around the whole thing in the front so, oh, sorry go ahead oh i was just going to say one thing that uh, we wanted to kind of keep original is because this hood was a big bud hood and it was next to the shore there was salt damage and pits everywhere on it so we decided you know what let's keep that to show how original it is and let's not fix that. There was a whole bunch of pitting around here, but we had to bond to it. But uh, and then of course we made the new front end because it's all rotten out and uh, designed it. But as you can see, there's holes in the grill and those are original. We decided to just keep it that way because we thought it'd be kind of a neat idea. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, we, uh, we got it together. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty pretty awesome. The decals we had to have redone, that's what took a little longer. They came in and they were the wrong color. The printer that they were printed from had problems and it came in like a salmon color. So we had to peel them off, put new ones on. Did you just say that? No. Okay, good. I just wonder if I just caught well, you. I can you say it again if you want me to. Yeah, I'd probably like to hear your voice a little bit. Um, so and you then could... we had a problem. So when we, when we put this exhaust on, we didn't have the air cleaner on and we decided uh, let's put the air cleaner on finally. Well, we had to move this out and then we had to build brackets because it shipped pretty good And then of course when we're winging it in it almost hit the exhaust, but uh Really, it went together pretty well. I mean, it folded yeah. right in, and we yeah. just had to build some spacer so it doesn't get too close to the cab. No, we just about hit the exhaust up there. I think we mentioned that in another video. It was but, tight. Uh, it was tight. Um, so the decals wrap around the fenders just like the buds do. And these are fuel tanks too on both sides. There's a, a transfer that goes between the two. So we're guessing, we haven't done the math, but we're figuring probably about close to 250 gallons, roughly. Yeah. It I'd could be that. more, it could be less, but that's quite a bit of fuel throughout the day. So yeah. they're slope bottom down so that they'll drain the fuel to the center and you'll uh, get all the fuel you can. And if you happen to hit in a big, huge ditch, the fender would have been down this far. Well, we didn't want to mash it, so we cut it at an angle, kind of like Versatile did. We uh, took that idea, but uh, otherwise, uh, yeah. It's a 1650-gallon uh, tank with 100-foot booms on a truck. <laughs> and you guys saw earlier in the video those green sprayers. Uh, those are from Wall Farms. They have two of them. Uh, back in the day, Tyler. Tyler is the original company that built these trucks. Then Case IH bought them out, and uh, now they're called Case Titans. But originally they were called Tylers. And one of them is a Tyler 4375. It's just three years older than this one. And it's basically identical to this truck, only it's they didn't uh, do the front end like we did. Their other one looks like a Steiger because it actually, Tyler, I didn't know this until talking to them, Tyler used to buy cabs and hoods from Steiger and they would mount them on their trucks. So that's why that one in that picture looks like an actual Steiger. Uh, and the guy is there, they're big Steiger fans and they went ahead and put the logo on them too. So that's, that's pretty cool. They, uh, those trucks that they have, one of them is an 1,800 gallon tank and the other one's a 2,400 gallon tank. Well, we're not quite that full, but we didn't want to spend the money and get a bigger tank when 1,650 is pretty, uh, pretty good gallons. We can go through it quite fast. So, but uh, yeah, they uh, they built some pretty impressive machines, and we uh, we want to say thanks to them for the idea and uh, the encouragement. They said, "Do it." <laughs> yeah. So we did so it. We, we took their uh, their input and uh, tried to make it happen. We haven't had any real field tests. As you can see, videos we had a lake here earlier. It's uh, all muddy right now, but it's it's the, the water's finally the snow's going away. We had 60 degrees a day, wind slightly blowing, melting everything away. So soon here we'll get a chance to take it out in the field. Um, I suppose. I think I should wing it up and park it next to the other one. Yeah, let's let's do that. So you guys want to watch this thing wing up? Should I hang on the end of it and see what happens? I think I can't go up that high, right? I'd walk around this. Let me, uh, let me climb over this boat. Get over this side. So I don't want to step in the water. See how easy it is for this boom to fly, the tip? I'll show you. Like, watch. I'm just using my fingers. I can't believe we finally got the secret out. Only a few people knew the name. A few people drove by, saw it, a few neighbors stopped by. 
We had some help from a neighbor today. Uh, very much appreciate his help. He, uh, the cruise control was having some issues. We got it mostly fixed. Isn't that cool? It's like a, an off spray or something. Swing its wings in. I'm still learning this DJI uh, Osmos uh, gimbal for my phone, so if it moves around a little bit every now and then, that's just because I'm trying to figure it out. We were real fortunate too. We had some worries about the hydraulics. We were having issues with the pressure staying uh, staying correct at the around 2,800 to 3,000 psi. It's a little high, but we kind of like it there because it means faster boom control. Um, but it it wasn't getting there, and we found out we had some issues with some standby pressure on the pump. So we fixed that, and then we had some plumbing issues with the way the, the hydraulic or, uh, water pump works. Come on, turn. There we go. Okay. I lift my phone up like this, then I can turn it. I just don't like this thing being right here. It's that wide angle lens has got it. Okay. Don't worry guys, I just blocked him, we're good. So, Big Brute. Does Big Brute belong next to Big Buds? Since he's part Big Bud, I think so. We'll drive in a second here, guys. Don't worry. It's all part of the show. We've actually never done this before. This is the first time seeing this next to the other big buds. So you guys are witnessing a pretty awesome moment. Okay, how do they look? Do they look similar? Can you guys tell? <laughs> <laughs> Did we make it look like a bud? Obviously the tires on this one look massive. And that's the one thing that looks a little funny on this big brute, is those tires in the front. And those aren't big tires, they're not small tires by any means. But uh, combined with uh, that massive hood and everything, that's the one thing that looks a little funny. Some people said, why didn't you put big tires on the front? Well, for some of those that don't know, these tires here never pivot or turn. This tractor turns in the center. These ones here actually turn towards the frame. So if you had a bigger tire, it would actually crawl into the frame and bad things happen. So you have to have a smaller tire. So we didn't, you know, if you're wondering why we didn't do that, that's kind of why. But uh, this one we were hoping to get in the shop and give it a whole new paint job and uh, clean it all up and, you know, snazz it up. But we didn't get to it because, uh, well, we were doing this thing and a few other things. So uh, maybe next year we'll uh, clean this one up. Yeah, we got plans for her. But uh, Restore it to look just course, like the rest of them. We got those other two lovely ladies over there. Uh, this is our first uh, Series 1. Our grandpa and uh, it'd be my grandpa's brother bought it together, brand new from the factory. And it was rated at uh, 310 think, or 320. I think it was 250. And then was it 250? after a year the engine went and they had to replace so, it get this this thing's had three engines it's had two transmissions it's had five hydraulic pumps and uh it's still going so you know we just keep on uh fixing it up and we're getting new shoes for this thing yep um got got tires coming yet. Yeah. but uh yeah this is uh good old trusty and what it was this weighs about forty five thousand pounds is that right yeah 42 45 Somewhere in there and With then this one here is about 54 yeah, right? 52, 54 without Something water in there. it, without, not ballast. And then we got the Series 2, of course, that we uh, last year went through and uh, put a different motor in it and a few other things and painted it. And, 
Uh, this one's rated at uh, five and a quarter horse. Had, uh, see, this thing's had one paint or two paint jobs and two motors and two trannies. Well, actually, no, it's just, yeah, two trannies. Yep, yep. And, uh, yeah, this is probably think, one of our favorite too. ones. Yeah, this girl's awesome. We just, uh, we all agree this one's probably our favorite. We all, we love them all, don't get us wrong. But, uh, Watch the video on this one. We built the ladder into this, and uh, on the other side, the same thing with the loader truck. And uh, but yeah, this one's ready to get ready to go seed. Yeah, but, uh, he he literally just pulled it out of the out of the snow pile. Well, it wasn't quite in the snow pile, but it's in the ground is drying up fast, so it won't be long. We'll be we'll be going at this soon. So I suppose let's take this truck for a drive, so uh, you can see some of the inside, huh, guys? That's what we want. You might want to let me pull it out of the way so you don't get. Okay, yeah, I can do that. It's yeah. kind of a puddle back there. Who knew, right? We only built one ladder on it. We just could have built one on the other side, but we figured there's really not a lot of times you need to access the other side from the ground. But Leg Arms is just going to jump up there because he's Leg Arms. So he doesn't need to do that. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> stand right here. You good like that? Okay, unless it's too loud for everybody. Oh, you should, you could probably take a seat. Does it work? Yeah, I can see it. Can you see me okay? Okay. So we got a push button. How do you get this thing to turn? <laughs> I know. You, you, you use this, this is a joystick right here. Oh, you go there like we that. go. I guess in here you guys are just going to have to deal with this thing being right here. Too fancy for me. <laughs> too cool for school. Uh, a little muddy over that way. I'm going to turn this thing around. Well, I'll go there through this There There you go. There you go. Yep. So you got a little joystick. Now you can see the hood and everything. Um, so we got her in the high range. It's good for about 50 miles an hour. Well, hang on, hang on a second. It says, I think right there, warning 80 miles an hour. Okay, we're good. Okay, yeah, we'll keep it under we 80. We can make I it guess. 80. Or 79. We'll go right about that. Here's our air horn cord right here. That's important. Okay. This thing's really fun to drive. I've never driven a floater uh, truck up until this, and this is one of the biggest they make. Turn some air on in here. See our fans. Oh yeah, we got air. A little bit. So we have some dry roads here. Look both ways. Okay, you guys ready for this? <laughs> As you're turning, Nick, it thinks that it works. <laughs> oh, it was following the outside. <laughs> I think it's smart and it tracks like an area in the middle. Okay, let's floor it. Get that mud off that tires. We don't need it on there. It's gonna splash everything I just washed. I spent the day washing this thing and cleaning it up. Okay, we're going 35. Got little mud splatters all over the windows. I'm gonna slow it down a little bit. We'll turn around and come back the other way. I suppose 30 miles an hour is fast enough, right? It's actually pretty quiet in here, it's not bad. I was wondering if the exhaust being over here is gonna be uh be noisy, but you can't even you hear more engine noise than you do the exhaust. You wanna go cruise main? 
Let's go to town and cruise Main Street. Yeah, should we drive around town? <laughs> we don't need a tow, let's just go. It does feel weird, because it feels like I'm driving a Big Bud, only I'm going over 30 miles an hour right now. This thing thinks that you're turning. Well, it tries to turn with it, but. Yeah, this thing rides smooth. It's not bad, and, you're, and Scott's sitting on an ice fishing bucket. That's our, that's our buddy seat right now. This is like the fastest I've ever been in this thing. That's 40 miles an hour right there. Why well, stop there? Let's go faster, Nick. Okay. There's a big hill over here. We can go down faster. Oh, some antelope. Are they impressed? Oh yeah, he's impressed. Okay, we got 45 miles an hour. 47 miles an hour, 48. Let's jump the curve. 49. There we go. We're running out of road here. <laughs> brakes do work good. We don't have uh, we don't have Jake brakes on here, unfortunately. That'd be fun to have Jake brakes, but nope, we're scaring the horse. The brute is coming. It's funny. <laughs> the horse is bucking and kicking. It feels like I'm driving the truck because I'm moving the joystick to try to keep this uh, this lens straight. Right. It's kind of weird, isn't it? No, I think it's at an angle. It's a neat thing, but uh, it doesn't know what's going on. There we go. Wasn't shifting the next gear. So there's a lot to learn on this thing. We just haven't had time to really play with it, figure out how it shifts and everything. But uh, I'll show you guys when we get back, drive back to the farm, we'll wing it out from inside the cab and show you how that all works. So this city of Shelby is just to our right. I'm just gonna pull up here and turn around this spot and we'll go back. thing around. Alright, let's flip this around, we'll head back. Okay, this thing's got a really tight turning radius. It turns just about as tight as our Apache does. It's unbelievable. Look how tight that is. I'm trying to get it to just keep up with it. <laughs> there you go. start turning to keep up with Nick. How about I'll ride a button now? Oh, it's fighting me. It's fighting me. <laughs> there we go. And we're cruising again. Oh yeah. 40, 43, 44. There's the antelope again. I don't know if you guys can see them. I don't know if you can see the, the monitor. The, uh, monitor. It's hard to see it with bouncing, but anyways, it says it's, it's it's moving. Yeah, this thing rides really nice. I'm in the air ride seat too, and it's really nice. Okay. Let's uh, pull off into the field up here. I was in the field the other day and it wasn't too bad, so we can go in there and I'll show you what it's like to wing it out when we're uh, in the cab. Okay, we'll slow down. You don't need to slow down. You can just jump it. 
All right. Okay, take it out of gear. So we'll put the parking brake on. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to see what I'm doing here. Here, I'm, I'm moving the camera. Okay, there we go. tilting it down. Okay, okay, so what we got here, I got my main hydraulic valve back here. Or I should say switch that turns on. Come on, this thing's. I'll tell you what, let's do this because. Uh, kind of reacting funny. Well, yep. That's fine, it works. You sure? Yeah, it's, okay. it's working. All right, Just... so I'll, I'll turn this switch on right here. And then uh, I press up on these two right here, and it lifts each, our booms up. Each one of those blue ones is a wing. You can see that right there, so I'll lower back down, raise it back up. So you gotta lift them up, and then to spread them, I go with this one right here. This gimbal's kind of, I know. Uh, it's, <laughs> it doesn't like being in here. Let's do this. I'm gonna take it out, because this would be easiest. To, yeah. We'll take it out of here. It's trying to fight. Here. here you go. Okay, there, I got, I'm handing the, I got the phone in my hand now, so. No more smooth. And then turn it off, we do this. Go. Here's the, the gimbal that I got. Okay, leg arms has got the camera. Oh, what a good looking guy. Look at him. Okay, let me put this up here. All right, so, let's wing this out. So I'm pressing. Okay. He's pressing the red one, swinging it out.
I'll show you the GPS here as we're going. So I've got it on uh, auto steer right now. I'm going to spin us around. We're going to intercept our AB line. I don't think I'm as good as that uh, uh, little uh, joystick you got there. I bounce a little bit more than I yeah. was. There we go. Okay, the steering wheel's taken over. Now, this isn't fully calibrated yet. Uh, it's uh, triangle egg came out and they got it set up basically so it'll run. So if we do need a spray, we can, but they're gonna come out when we're actually in the field and then they're gonna fine tune the machine so it runs really good. It doesn't take long to get up to speed in this thing. I was driving mostly around 15 miles an hour uh, when you guys were outside with the uh, leg arms. And uh, that's typically the speed that we'll be spraying at about 15. Sometimes faster, sometimes slower, depending on what rate we're putting on. So when you get to the end of the field like this, kick the GPS off. You turn, you might have, boom. You might have to raise your boom up a little bit. And then when it, uh, my little indicator here turns yellow, it means like an intercept line again. There we it's go. It's kind of hard for them to actually see it with a bouncing, but it's uh, hard. Yeah. I've got a... They get the idea. Here. I hope. There we go. So I've been pressing this button right here. That one right there. That turns on my auto steer on and off. Uh, joystick. This is our uh, auto boom. It's not working right now. That'll actually raise and lower the boom out on the ground. There's a little sensor right there on the end of the boom right there. It's funny because when we uh, had it uh, on the other new Holland sprayer, everything worked fine last season and then we plug it all together here and it's giving us an error code so we'll have to figure that out. Yeah. So, everybody's watch this now. Hey! <laughs> so let's wing this up, let's take it back and then uh, let's call it a day. How about that? Hey, look. No hands. Yeah, I got no hands too. Okay. Oh wait, no oh, once. I don't want to drop the other one. <laughs> okay, we turn off the auto steer. So I'll show you right here. So we'll stop. I'll press neutral. Take it out of gear. You don't have to put the parking brake. I just do it sometimes. When he was out there, I said it. Okay. So let's go ahead and turn off. It actually already turned off our auto steer. So let's raise the boom up. So first we'll start with the center. And that'll just lift the whole boom up, okay? I'll go wide angle lens here. Then let's do both. I usually just use my thumb and do both at the same time. I can do one at a time if I want. That'll lift the wings up. Okay. Then the next step is to fold the tip in, which is this top one right here. So I'm pressing it. Okay, here we go. Boom is coming in. It's really weird being this close to this boom because when it was on the tractor, being pulled by the tractor, we were probably about 20 feet or 30 feet ahead of it. So it's seeing this thing wing up right over your head is kind of weird. And this one only takes one button to do this, but both of them should be winging at the same time. You have to make sure the boom's lifted up out of the way. Otherwise, those will totally hit the tank. Okay, so I double shovel check, make sure everything's up all the way. Press up on everything. Now let's go ahead and uh, pull the booms in. So I press the red one. See it coming in? We're running at about 3,000. Oh, wow. We're at 3,500 PSI. Whoa. Yeah, it's a lot higher than it should be. Yeah, that's well, why it's going faster. Yeah. That's a lot faster or higher. We got some, it's got some tuning to do on this thing. It's not perfect yet. Uh, there, we had some issues with the spring sticking inside your uh, hydraulic pump. Yep. And uh, I think we might need to adjust it. Okay. Your pump off. So I got to lower it down. So I'm going to press these two right here. Drop it down so it locks. There we go. Okay. Now let's go ahead and turn that pump off. So that kicked our standby pressure down to 300. This other gauge right here is our water pressure gauge. I'll go to the other camera here so you guys can see it. Howdy. There we go. So you can see we have our hydraulic pressure on the left there and our water pressure on the right. If I tap the hydraulic pressure, it should not be that high. That's really high. <laughs> so we're not going to run that. Um, I didn't know this pump could go that high. So well, yeah, that can get a little higher, but it's not smart to have it that high. Yeah, that stuff can blow out when you do that. Zoom back out. All right, let's take it home. Do you want to drive it? No, I'm, that's good. Okay. Hold the camera. Do a burnout. I just want to look at his pretty face. Look at that thing. Look at that.
but you just look at it. Okay, I'm doing rooster tail for burning. Uh, I feel it lean a little bit. Oh, it's sliding the rear end around a little bit. Well, guess who gets to fix these ruts? Donuts! Not it! We're good. That thing does a pretty sweet donut. If only we had ice, I'd go take it out and try it. Let's see what it looked like. Want to see my creation? And ladies and gentlemen, crop circles. That is how it's done. <laughs> I bet if I put it in a low gear, I probably would have spun the tires more. No, you're spinning the tires. You you made ruts there, that's for sure. Yeah, let them ponies, let the ponies out. Just planting those uh, wonderful uh, oat seeds and uh, all that fun stuff. Yeah, let's kill it. Don't worry. Let's get back on the county road. So. There's gonna be a lot of hours spent this thing. There'll be a lot of future live streams in here. You guys will probably get sick and tired of this thing. So then you'll be begging us to build something else, like, I don't know. We should figure out a new one. A hot tub on wheels that goes 50 miles an hour. Yeah, there we go. We might do something like that. I don't know if we're gonna do a big project like this next winter. It's hard to say. This one, we did We did a lot this winter. We did uh, the 8940 Case Magnum. We Rebuilt the, that. The Fummins, we did uh, the Fummins. Let's see, we did, did the Longhorn, the Chevy Longhorn, put an engine in that. Did some work on the skid steer. We've uh, pulled a lot of equipment in and out, like little jobs here and there. So it's been it's been pretty busy this year. Okay, max speed test, here we go, downhill. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just... You want me to hold it? Yep. When you get max well, speed, you should... This one right here. There, there we go. Oh, that's better. That one's actually pretty accurate. A little bouncy. Not too bad though. Okay, about 50. And we're moving pretty fast. And there's a four wheeler on the road. I know. <laughs> Bet you he's scared. So it doesn't take long to get to the field. I, I guarantee you though, we're not going to be rowing this thing at 50 miles an hour around everywhere. But oh. we'll probably go 45. Not with the full load, that's for sure. Yeah. And the brakes? Well, we don't have a full load in it, so they're not terrible. Here's our a little bit of our lake still. Don't worry, uh, in about three days we'll still stock the lake with trout and, I don't know, a couple guppies or something. Okay, I'm gonna back this up next to the... Back it up next to the KT8. 525. How fast does reverse go? Need a backup camera. What's our max speed reverse? Our max speed reverse is 5.8 miles an hour. guys let's see here so I'm shutting everything down I got the triple monitor shutting down right here it's uh powered off powered off there we go hey look you can see me that's what everyone else sees we still have some work you can see there's some stuff exposed down here it didn't have a cover and we got it so we're gonna probably make a cover put it on it little touch-ups in the cab that need to happen we'll do those along as things go got our two-way radio in here our uh, stereo does work I didn't have it on but it does work and uh, our buddy seat, if you guys can see here, is a transmission oil, hydraulic oil, with the uh, ice fishing seat on the top. We still haven't figured out what kind of seat to put in here. It didn't have a buddy seat originally. You look in the floor right here, these are the bolt holes, the original bolt holes. We actually shifted the seat over as far as we could up against the side here, because most of the time it's your left arm on the steering wheel like this. We don't have the wide angle on, do we? 
There we go, okay. So when you're driving, you're like this, so it doesn't matter to have the steering wheel centered with your chest. But that way we can hopefully get a buddy seat right here, and that's the plan. So there's my gimbal. I can take that, put this down here, and we can uh, shut this off. Actually, here, let me, uh, I'll go ahead and talk to you guys real fast here. So anyways, uh, some updates. We're probably gonna be seeding sooner than we thought. The way the weather's looking, it's warming up. So we'll see how that goes. So the buds back here are gonna be firing up soon enough. Um, update on the farming simulator map. The guys are working hard on it. The Mappers Paradise guys, I gotta do a test drive with them last weekend, and it looks good. There's just a few things are tightening up, but uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be really nice. I played a little bit of it not too long ago. It looks amazing. It's really surreal playing our farm in a video game, so I think you guys are gonna really get a kick out of it. They've gone all out to make it as close as they can get. It's been really fun working with them. So just so you guys know, it's coming close. I know I've said that a bunch, but it's coming real close. I don't wanna say a time or anything yet because uh, that's their deal. When they're ready, they'll announce that. But when it happens, I'll be all over it. I'll be live streaming it. I'll probably be playing Farming Simulator. You guys will see lots of that stuff. So yeah, lots of stuff coming to the Farming Simulator map. Um, can you please drive the 525 tractor, please? Oh boy, you guys. Those are for later, right? It needs work. I could fire it up for you guys if you want. We're at 50 minutes. I got 49% battery life, so let's do it, huh? How about that? So, let's flip uh, flip this cam around. We got to go to this one right here. Nope, sorry, that's me again. Go to the wide angle. I just, I've been stressing out all week. You guys won't believe how stressed out I was to do this whole thing today because I had to make the opening video, which I'm glad you guys enjoyed. There we go, that's what I want. And my phone I sent off to get repaired. It was supposed to be here yesterday, but uh, it didn't come until today. So I stalked the FedEx truck and found him. Got it, got my phone updated, got the app updated, all that done, so. All right, so our truck's cooled down. Our water temp's only sitting about 190 or so, but that's where the thermostat is, I'm sure. Our fuel gauge doesn't work. We never put a fuel sender in the tanks because we have a sight gauge on the outside, so that's not a big deal. According to this, it has 37,000 miles on it, and uh, we'll see if that's accurate, but it's a fresh start for us. So I'll go ahead and turn it off here. This thing is awesome. And you can see we got like five pedals down here. We've got the decelerator button. When you press that, it'll decelerate the engine down to about 1,000 RPM in case you got to cross a ditch or something. And then you click it again, and it accelerates back up to your cruise control speed. Our cruise is right here, as you can see. Cruise on, and then you set, resume. We're still working some reason. The, the set side of things is kind of confusing, or the resume, I should say. So we're going to figure that out. Water pump, that's for running your water pump. Turn it on and off the hydraulics. I already showed you guys that. Back here is a diverter valve. This is how we control the flow of our water pump. So actually, let's fire it up real quick. I'll, I'll show you guys that. This thing's fun to turn on. So if I turn on our hydraulic pump, you can see the pressure now is correct. It's about 3,000. And if I turn on my water pump and start turning this, the water pump will start spinning. There we go. You can kind of hear it as it turns on and off. So that's how that works. And that way we can control how fast our water pumps run and control our water pressure from there. So I didn't show you guys that earlier. Okay. There we go. There's a little bit of water in here. This this float is floating. We probably got about 20 gallons in here. That's supposedly this is uh this is 50 US gallons right here. That's Imperial gallons. So it's somewhere in that area. But we had to do some work to this, this pump. It wasn't working. As you can see, the paint's all chipped off of it because we took it off and had to work on it a little bit, put a different end on it. There was a little check valve and a ball that was all messed up, so we fixed that. And our fuel, we burnt a little bit. If you look right here, there's a stain in the water or in this rubber hose, and that's where the fuel was when we filled it up. So I've burnt down that much. I don't have a lot of fuel left, actually. We're getting down. Let's top the tanks off. Hey, Monty. How you doing? How's it going? Good. They want, to, they want me to start the 525. Good? Yeah, it's, it's on. Okay. okay, all right, guys. We'll drive this one just because it's a special day. I know you guys have wanted this. I actually just stuck that magnet on there for the video. It's not cut out yet. Hey, yeah. You oh, you're fine. I can hold it like this. We'll just take this. Let me put this uh, 
like right here. I gotta cut it out. It comes in a big sheet like that and then I trim it out with the scissors so it actually fits in the door. This one is gonna get an update soon. It's got the Trimble 750 in it right now. Look, there's Big Brute. Hey, look at that. That's a friend of ours down there on the four-wheeler. He saw us driving around. So he was out riding around. So, okay. To start this girl, it's just a key actually. You see the tape on the steering wheel? That's because this is a chrome steering wheel. When the sun is just right, it reflects off and shines in your face. So we got fed up with it one day, so we taped it all with, uh, with tape. Okay, let's fire it up. There we go. 600 horsepower or more. You guys want to see some color roll? Let's watch this. Okay, and our throttle is right here. It's an air throttle, actually. Got to get some air pressure built up first. Once the air builds up, then I can release the parking brake. Let's see, our air pressure's right here. It's right at about, what is that, almost 40 PSI. We need a little more. So when it warms up here, gets a little more air pressure, I can release the parking brake, and then the throttle will work. And then we'll roll coal. We're going to have to get a new window, too. This one's got cracks in it. This tractor runs really good, though. It's, it's, Rough as it may look, it's uh, it's really solid machine. The drivetrain in it's about perfect. I mean, the engine transmission, axles, everything's been gone through, so it's uh, it's a good machine. It just needs some paint and some new stuff done in the cab, and it'll be uh, be right ready to go. So we're at about 50 psi. Let's turn the throttle up here. We got more air to run the throttle. Oh yeah, here we go. Here's some uh, coal for you guys. What's the sprayer's name? The sprayer's name is Big Brute. Let's show my pretty face for a second here while I switch the cameras. I'll zoom in if you guys can see it. Right there. Big Brute. If you guys watched the beginning of the video, you can see. We went back and forth on painting the underside of that white right there. I was kind of for painting it white. My brother and others were saying, don't do it. Uh, it was about 50-50 guys said do it, some said don't, but it was just kind of an awkward spot and we were running out of time and we thought, you know what, it's as unique as it is right now, we're going to leave that black because that black all right there matches the black frame in the back and all the booms and everything, so we left it. Okay, how's our air pressure? Right at about 50, 55, I need a little more here. I'll push the brake and see if it releases. Oh, it might release. Okay, so we're in low right now which is fine. We're not gonna go real fast. So I'll take it out of low. We'll put it in gear. Let's go up one. So we're in a uh, first gear and low, so we're not gonna go real fast. Gotta still get some air pressure. Our brakes are just slightly squealing here. So let me take it out and put it in neutral real fast. I suspect we have an air leak somewhere because it's taking a lot longer than it should to build that air pressure up. So we've got an airline that runs to the back and it uh, used to run it to supply tree for grain carts, so that might be what's leaking. This tractor is set up to run to run the air drill if we have to, but we usually don't. Okay. Let me throttle up a little bit here. Get that air pressure. There, now our air pressure's going up. I think we got a leak somewhere. Okay. Let's do it. So our transmission's locked up. This has a torque converter in it. So when you're running it, as you power shift, it'll go to the torque converter. The torque converter will take the power then. And then when the RPMs and the transmission speeds match up, it locks up the transmission so you have direct drive uh, to the axles, to the wheels. So let's shift another gear here. Go three, four, five, we'll do six. You hear that power shift whine a little bit. There we go. Okay, the throttle, it's in a weird spot. It's kind of funny being up here like this. We're probably only going about five, well, maybe seven, eight miles an hour right now. I'm running at about 1400 RPM. Thing 
takes up the whole road. Okay, here we go. Let's throttle it up. So that's uh, 2,300 RPM. That's about the max that it runs. Oh wait, we can get, we can get a little more out of it. About 2,400 RPM is what that 1150 Cummins runs. It's actually pretty amazing how fast it spins. We're in the low range, so let's go ahead and put it in the high range, so I'll bring the throttle back. Let's take it, we'll uh, shift down. Okay, I'll put it in low, and then I'm going to do a quick trick here. There we go. Now we're in the high range. Let's go high, one, two, three. So now when I give it some gas, we'll, we'll go a lot faster our smoke over there. So it's going to shift through the gears just like that other uh, floater truck, the Big Brute. I got to get used to saying Big Brute now. I'm used to not, not saying its name. So this is uh, second gear actually is what we're in right now. It says three, but it's only in second. It's about to shift to the next gear. There we go. Oh, no, this is third gear. Never mind. Tires have been sitting all year. This is the first time this thing's driven this year. So they've got some flat spots in them just from sitting. But those flat spots work out after a little bit of running it. That's why there's a little bit of a wobble to it. You kind of see it moving. I haven't been reading your comments. Sorry, I've just been focused on driving this stuff, but uh, I'll stop for a little bit when I get back and I'll read a few comments and I'll call it a day. Thanks for uh, definitely being a part of this. Okay, we'll turn the corner here. We'll flip us around. And this will be in the farming simulator map, just so you guys know. This corner right here, all this area. So you guys will be able to do exactly... Sorry guys, I don't know what happened there. I lost it for a second. I must have pressed something on my phone and the map of the uh, app closed, but it's back now. Okay. All right. Here, let's roll some phone real quick for you guys. One last time driving in here. I'll bring it to an idle. We'll stop real fast. Breaks. Here we go. Ready? In three, two, one. turned on the 750 GPS, I'd have speed on it, but uh, this doesn't currently. This is a little noisier than the other buds because it's got the twin disc transmission underneath the floor. That's the thing that makes the most noise. The engine actually isn't as loud on this. Gotta bring the throttle back a hair. Okay. We'll drive the other buds another day. There's a good chance this one's gonna get used a lot this year because it's gonna be pulling out all of our other ones. That's why we have three tractors. 
because uh, you have to have three if two are working because uh, it's a pain to unhook one that's working, drive it all the way over, pull the other tractor out. But with this one sitting here, we'll have this one ready to go with the, the rope and everything, the cable. So when one of those girls over there gets stuck, we can hook onto this bad boy. So I'm gonna back it up to where it was. There's Big Brute hanging out back there. I'm glad you guys like the name Big Brute. I just was nervous about using it, but it just seemed to fit the most. If you look up the definition of brute, it actually, it kind of fits it and it kind of doesn't. So, <laughs> I don't know, I figured it was not bad. Let's go back. So, put it in reverse. Full throttle. Just a little bit here. There we go. So this tractor weighs about 53,000 pounds, somewhere in that area. We never actually weighed it, that's just what the specs say. Um, there's no reason to put water in the tires. Uh, we could if we wanted to. You could probably ballast the thing out to over 80,000 pounds if you wanted to. Uh, we don't need to do that. It's got enough weight as is with the, with the horsepower. So it will spin the tires, but we don't have any implements that are pulling hard enough. There's leg arms. He's waving at us. It's kind of pretty. There's Big Brew right there. Okay, let me back this up so I don't drive into the shop because this wheel does drive right through that building if I don't press this, the neutral button here. I don't feel like driving through the building with you guys here. That building right there was built by my grandpa and his brother, my great uncle. We moved it here. Set the parking brake. Take it out of gear. Okay. Let me put it back in low range real quick. There we go. Now we didn't run it real long, so it's not real hot. What is the water temp at? The water temp is right here. Yeah, we're only at like 170, so it's not even at operating temperature yet. Okay, let's shut her off. So there will be eventually a video done of this unit too when we uh, when we. Re completely overhaul and restore, I guess it's not overhaul, should just say paint, paint and decal it, and do a couple uh, little tweaks and things that we like. I'll walk over to Big Brood again real quick, so you guys can see it one more time before we shut this down. There we are. So for those of those that weren't here at the beginning, that is the name we chose, Big Brood. fits pretty well. Uh, I don't think there's a sprayer like it in the world. This is definitely going to be one of a kind. At least this one. That looks like a bud. Big old tires on it. Those tires are actually the biggest tires we have on the farm. They're 73 inches. These uh, uh, 30.532s actually aren't as big as these. These things are massive. So, there we go. And here's, uh, here's a shot of the buds. Just waiting. Soon enough, these things will all be going. Okay, let's go back into the shop. And then I can uh, answer a few of your comments and do a couple of those things. And then uh, and then uh, we can uh, we can end this, this uh, awesome day. I am thankful. Thankful that it ran. Thankful that it all came together. Thankful that my phone came and I got it set up. That's nice. I was a little worried about that one. Uh, it's thankful the weather worked out. I wish I could have done this tomorrow morning, so that way all the European and uh, Europe, as I just said European, all those guys could have watched it too, but the weather tomorrow is going to be terrible. They're talking like gusts up to 50 miles an hour. So all you guys would have heard was So I just didn't want to do it tomorrow. So it had to be tonight. So those guys that didn't get to watch it live, thanks for watching it again later. It'll be up today to tomorrow you guys will be able to watch it when you get a chance so all right let's see here go ahead speak to me let's read some stuff so when is the map coming out for ps4 i actually don't know exactly how they'll be released if they'll all be released at the exact same time for uh, all the consoles and pc i have a suspicion they'll probably come out on pc first because i imagine xbox and playstation have to do uh have to do uh like a uh an approval or something I'm guessing to make it on their downloadable content I'm not sure but we'll see how it goes um, how does the air throttle work the air throttle works similar to like a 
well, it's uh, pneumatics. Uh, it uses basically air pressure to push a cylinder, just like hydraulics. If you know how hydraulics work, just replace the oil with the uh, with air. And that's how the the uh, the air throttle works. The reason they did the air throttle is because they used to have to have a long linkage that ran all the way down under the cab, back up into the fuel pump. Because these tractors are mechanical fuel pumps, they have a, a mechanical linkage. New tractors have electronic. There's an actual computer that tells it when to throttle up, when to throttle down, and your switch in your cab has wires. So Big Bud at the time, and I think it was probably an add-on that Cummins had. Uh, they, because the cab tilts back and there's such a distance, I mean, I, I don't know how long the cable has to be. It's like 15 feet long, long throttle cable. That's what they use the air for, so it's an air throttle. So there's a little solenoid, or not a solenoid, actuator, I guess you could say, a little cylinder on the, the fuel pump, and it just slowly extends out as you give it pressure, and then as you let off, then it goes back. So that's how the fuel works. Do you fish the Welker River? I should, <laughs> if we had time. We've been pretty busy. <laughs> been really busy. I'm probably adding a lot of gray hairs. But we've been getting by, and it's nice to have this done and out of the way. I'm just so thankful that the, the reveal is done and we can work on this stuff because we're going to hit these fields real soon, and it's going to get intense. We have more acres than we ever have had to seed. There's lakes all over. There's a lake right over here. I'll probably show you guys sometime here. It's gigantic. It's over a mile long in our field. Uh, it's, it's massive. I could probably put a wave runner in. So, Okay, what else here? How many gears on the 525? The 525 has nine gears. Nine. There's three uh, high-speed gears and uh, seven. No, wait, six. Yeah, six uh, low-speed gears. Mapper's Paradise. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining in. Thanks, uh, everybody, for being here for this. Did you guys MIG weld the frame? Uh, we did MIG weld a lot of it, but a lot of the frame we didn't have to, so, yeah. Thanks for the videos. Got the coming farm simulator map. You bet, guys. I hope uh, this is fun to watch this stuff. If you guys hate it, you could move along. But if you like it, give me a thumbs up. And, uh, yeah, definitely subscribe to our channel, um, Welker Farms, Inc. If you guys want updates when these uh, videos air and everything, subscribe to the channel. It'll give you updates. I post a lot of stuff. Sometimes it's uh, high-quality professional videos that I've spent a lot of time making. Or sometimes it can be a simple live stream like this. So, yep. We're also on Instagram. We're on Facebook. And we're on Twitter. But Twitter's more of just an Instagram post. So, yeah, subscribe to all of us. All right, nice intro. Glad you guys enjoyed the intro. I wanted to make something. Um, dumb question. Why do you only see the mass tractors in, wait, why do you only see the mass tractors in Montana, not everywhere else? The reason partially for mass tractors in Montana and North Dakota, as well as other places, is because our fields are huge compared to a lot of the country. Uh, we can't grow the type of crops like corn and soybeans in here. So what we grow is wheat and, uh, you know, cereal crops like barley. And it takes a lot of acres of those crops to make money. And there's so much vast land out here that when you have fields that are, you know, two, 300 acres up to some guys are pushing fields over a thousand acre fields, it takes a big tractor because it, you don't want to be pulling a small 20 foot plow to, to work on a 500 acre field. So instead you want to have a 60, 70 foot plow or a 60, 70 foot air seeder up to now they have 80, 100 feet. Well, it takes a lot of horsepower to run something like that. So that's why it takes a big tractor and a big tractor. They need weight. They need a lot of weight to keep the tires on the ground so it can dig and pull. So that's why Montana has big tractors. So big old tractors. Oh, look who showed up. Hello. So he's back. Yeah. Uh, they said, hello, Nick. That was a great red carpet premiere, Mr. Hollywood. Thank you. Good videos. I appreciate it, guys. We are planting in Nebraska. You guys are lucky. Oh, my. We're not far behind you. We're uh, we're probably about a week and a half. What else? Uh, hi from Australia. Oh, my. Actually, what time is that? Well, if it's late here, it's probably morning there right now. Oh, my goodness. Thanks for answering the, uh, that question. You bet. Uh, time for a few lucky laggers. <laughs> nice. Yes. Hello from Australia. Hello, mine, not yours. <laughs> Hello, uh, happy Patriots Day. <laughs> yeah, I know. 420, that was a really odd time to pick to do this. The weather worked out best. I actually didn't pick the day because of 420 because, uh, you know. Tomorrow is supposed to blow. Apparently that's what they say. Yeah, and I just... In this country, they're right about a couple things. The temperature and the wind. And yeah. this year, surprisingly, they have been right about all the snow. Yeah, they have been. <laughs> they predicted and it's come. So shoot the bowling ball. That's soon. We'll do another video for yeah. that eventually. Don't worry, guys. That video's coming. So that's, hang on to that That's one. another. I got to keep the suspense video. a little bit. We just showed the big brute. You know, you guys, we should be standing next to that thing. It's just yeah, all alone over there. Should, well, Look at that poor thing. Where's, where's the...
Where's the pole there? We'll have to fish it out of there. Oh, oh we'll wait for another day. Yeah. You can see that later. Okay. Um, high leg arms from Mapper's Paradise. Ooh. Well, those guys are making the map. What, I, I, it, uh, what gears are in your Peterbilts? Uh, 13 speeds? One's got a 10 speed, one's got a 13. No, it's an 18. Or oh, an 18, yeah, sorry. There's a, There's yeah, a, a 10 No, and it's 18. a 9 speed and then a 13, or an 18 speed. 9 and in 18. In those uh, Peterbilts. That's right, yeah. And then the dump truck, the International's got a 13 speed. Yeah, we can go through all that later, but. Yeah, drone footage with the new sprayer. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to get a lot of drone footage when I do get drone footage. And I get time because I'm afraid that once I get the footage, seating's going to start. It's going to be really hectic. I'm not going to have any time to edit. But if I do get some downtime, if it rains on us, I get a couple days where I'm able to do something, I'll probably sit down and edit that video together. It's going to take me a while, but you guys are going to love it. There will be a time lapse video of the whole Big Brute project. And if you guys give him a huge bonus, like a couple hundred bucks here and there, maybe he'll get it done sooner. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It's like 500 bucks. I'll uh, sit down and do it. No, I need a little more footage, just a little more footage of that thing. You know, it's funny when he says that because the amount of footage he has gotten through this whole process, how many gigs do you think you have? I've got like 140, 150 100 gigs of pictures. Of just pictures and time lapse and probably not any videos, right? No, I'll probably have another 10 gigs in video. <clears throat> it's incredible. Yeah, there's a lot of data. He's got a lot of work ahead of him. But I got a sweet computer, so it makes it a little nicer now. Um, hi from Saskatchewan. We have two trucks with 18 speeds and a 13 speed. Nice. Ooh. Good. Jeez, leg arms got off the. Uh, where'd that go? Oh, got all the looks, eh? Got all the looks. He is Except a good for this guy. scar right here. Maybe. This was a grinder to the face. Yeah. He, yeah. He got Luckily, a... the key thing is I got married before it happened, so yeah. she's stuck with the scar face. That's a trick. If you're going to get injured, get injured before you get married. Um, horsepower, a big brute. Uh, well, it's max horsepower on the engine, it says 425. But we learned today it says it's actually more like 365, but we're just going to go ahead and say 425. Cause if it says it on the engine tag, we'll yeah, just go with that. That came from the factory with 425, so it's somebody, 425. Somebody might have uh, uh, tampered with it along the way. Yeah, but it's got it's power. To say. Uh, let's see. How leg arms are you going to cut the sleeves off that shirt? <laughs> if you give Nick 500 bucks, I might cut them right now. Yeah. No, no. We're slowly working up some gear. Getting used to our stuff worn in, and then eventually when we get these worn in, it'll become a work shirt. So, um, if you guys would like sweatshirts, hats, or t-shirts, all in these colors, um, email us at welkerfarmsinc at gmail.com. Welkerfarmsinc, gmail.com. If you guys want to do logos for your farms or um, whatever business you have and you want to have something like this, my wife, she has a thing called designbeast.com, and she can whip up some uh, different kind of logos and things like that if you're interested. Um, she did great work, and uh, we, we were very uh, thankful for that. But, yes, if yep. you guys want hats and shirts and sweaters, and we're up. not doing shoes or anything else. so Yeah, no shoes yet. Uh, we might do flip-flops, but yeah. we'll, we'll see how that goes. Possibly an underwear <clears throat> line as well. We're, uh, we're still looking into that. Yeah, it's, it's a debate. <laughs> Do you guys sell merchandise like the hats and hoodies? Yes, we do. Actually, we just talked about that. The comments are a little late, so just so you guys know, it's like a delay. That's the joy of doing live streams. So um, I have a feeling there's much, a mob of people waiting for that merchandise. <laughs> My wife's ready for the emails. Send away. Just tell us what you want. Then we send you an invoice, your PayPal, and then when we figure out your address and you agree to the price. We need your social security number. Yeah, uh, a bunch of stuff. Test, uh, you know, a couple things. That, Nothing you know, too personal. Maybe urine sample. Briefs, pants. <laughs> yeah. So, no, we get you set up. Uh, it, I just so real quick, hats are twenty four ninety nine, shipped free shipping in the United States. Overseas, we have to charge for shipping because it would cost and take away everything. that We'd lose money on the stuff if we did that. So we don't make a lot of money on this stuff anyways. Uh, sweatshirts are uh, $44.99, right at $45. And then T-shirts are $14.99. Or $14 so $24.99, $14.99, $44.99. I just feel like I got a price tag on me. Yeah, he did. So, oh, that's uh, not worth Leg lot. arms looks like Eric Church. I don't, know. I don't know who Eric Church is. I don't know. Eric Church. Probably some famous person. Maybe I want Welker Farms panties. Just if, hang on. We might eventually get some someday. If you're a guy, no. Yeah, no. No. Sorry. No. Um, what part? <clears throat> me and the missus, what part, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I don't know what that means. Let's see here. Would be able to message through Facebook goodbye. Yeah, you could send messages through Facebook. You don't have to use email, but... 
We prefer you to use email because that way we can respond. We can't respond to you through PayPal, through Facebook. So we have to reply through an email to work through the process. We have a website now. It's at welkerfarms.com, welkerfarmsinc.com. We don't have a, an e-commerce store on there. There is the merchandise there. You can see it. You can uh, go through the process on how to figure out how to buy it by the email and everything. But we don't have the ability to actually buy it through the website because they cost a lot of money to have an e-commerce website. And we basically would just break even by what we're doing. So it's easier just to use email for right now. But if these start flying off the shelf and we just can't keep them in stock and everything, maybe we'll get an e-commerce site set up so you guys can just... Uh, Click, 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 what you want, and buy, buy, buy. What size do they go up to? We uh, typically go up to 2XL on everything. We can special order big sizes if you want it when we put orders in. Sometimes it takes a while because we usually don't put orders in until we get low on inventory. But we found out that the 2XLs go a lot. We're always selling 2XLs, and we probably should make that a more of a priority to get a lot of those. Uh, the smalls and the mediums don't sell very much, but the larges up to 2XL sell quite a bit. So Just so you know. We're in the process of making action figures, so if you're interested in buying action figures of us, that <laughs> yeah. would be... No, no, we're not. That'd be pretty cool, actually. <laughs> uh, but we could do the bobblehead. This guy says his hats are being delivered <clears throat> Monday. Nice! Ooh. I'm glad. Wear it with pride. If you guys want us to autograph the hats, too, I, I can do that. I don't know if you'd want our signature. It's kind of weird. Mine's that. pretty sloppy. You yeah. might want it. But I usually I sign my signature. under the bill somewhere, like right there. But I usually don't autograph unless, unless they're asked, but we can do that. So... Big Bud's horsepowers, uh, one's 425 horsepower, one's 525 horse. no wait, 435 horsepower, one's 525 horsepower, one's about 600 horsepower, and then Big Brute, who's right there, right there, is like 425 max, peak, we'll go with that. So technically we have three and a half Buds, or three and a quarter Buds. This person wants a bobblehead. <clears throat> bobblehead, that'd be yeah. cool. So, okay, uh, what else? Maybe tractors, you should make buds. <laughs> no, we can't. Well, if somebody's going to fund us and give us a, give us the, all the fun toys to build one, we could probably yeah. build a couple, but yeah, we're going to leave that up to Ron Harmon and his crew. Yeah, uh, big equipment, those guys. And then uh, what would, uh, what's um, what's the company that might be? Rome the, Plow. Rome Plow, that's right. They yeah. might be building some big buds. Rome Plow's supposedly working on some prototypes right now so next year i bet you guys might see some leaked pictures or some released pictures and photos maybe even video of uh brand new big buds being made and if rome plow just happens to be watching this you can bring a bud up here one of the new ones we'll test it out we'll pull out our other ones with it and uh give you a pretty good review it we're, we're okay with a It'd be really hard to do. We really don't want to, but yeah. if you're if if it was came down to it and you did bring one up here, we would take it for a drive and we would probably use it a little bit and show it off, maybe do a live stream or two. It might stay here for a couple of years, you know, or so. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, what else? You guys have tried the 747 Big Bud Farming Simulator. I haven't. I wait, no, yes, I have tried it. A little bit I have played a farming simulator. I haven't played a lot, but a little bit I have. I did drive that around a little bit, hooked onto an implement. It was kind of fun. So when our new map comes out, I'll probably be using it. Is it a shame that I haven't even played that game once? Uh, it's okay. Like Arms doesn't play video games. He lives a video game. <laughs> Eric Church is a country singer. Oh. 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 Country, huh? <laughs> like Arms no like country. Not very much. Very few country songs I can go with, but... Will we get... Uh, Will we get a John Deere? Uh, someday, depend well, on the we've price. Got four John Deeres on the farm. Mm -hmm. We've had more in the past, on and off. See, three dirt working ones, and then one John Deere tractor. Yeah, yeah, <clears> definitely. <throat> so moderators needed. Yeah, I do need to pick out some moderators. Uh, my wife occasionally gets on and moderates, but it's kind of hard for me to keep up in the comments. It does filter most comments. Uh, so language and stuff should be kicked out when people uh, say stuff. But you got to think of the children, people. The yeah. children. We like to keep this a clean channel, so please be, please be nice. Don't be jerks on here. If you're jerks, I'll ban, and I ban permanently. So, anyways, but yeah, I need to get some more moderators so you guys can take care of that, and then I can do it. I can't moderate you now, AJ. The phone doesn't let me, but I can get on my computer later and maybe do that. So I'll think about it. I need to make a couple of you guys moderators. A couple of you guys are pretty there loyal. You know. So, yeah, you guys can moderate for us. It would be uh, much obliged. And then you could throw the ban hammer down. Ban people. <laughs> you could ban me. Probably. Ban, ban. <laughs> so, John Deere skid steer. Yeah, we do have it. It's right there with the Fummins. But that's not a John Deere. That's that's a John Deere right there. See, we've got two 12-valve Cummins there. Oh, huh, that's weird. Yeah, there is. There's a Dodge and a Ford. Yeah, so About the same year Cummins. What do you think about European tractors? I think they're pretty cool. I think they go pretty fast. 
that's impressive. You know, honestly, watching some of those European tractors, they're impressive machines. Yeah. We don't, we're not, we don't get to try them out. We don't know what they're like around here, but mm -hmm. yeah. um, what they can do is it's very impressive. Yeah. Very impressive. Definitely. So you should do a tug of war with the deer and the bud. <laughs> We need a bigger deer. We don't have any deers big enough in the area that can do, give, the, give the bud a challenge. I think if we hook all of our deers to it, I think the bud still will push it. It'd it, it. It drag them backwards. <laughs> and just so you guys know, this is kind of uh, happening. There's going to be a tractor pull in Shelby, Montana. Shelby's a town where we live in. First time they've ever brought a tractor pull sled to our fair. Yeah. A sled to our fair. The fair is the third week of July. And so there could be a chance a big bud or maybe even the brute. Might go to the tractor pole and see what they can do. So if that happens, you guys will probably get a live stream and some videos. Don't worry. I'll be sitting in the stands eating popcorn. Yeah. He Nick can pull it. He's going to drive it. <clears throat> no, Nick will do it. He can pull it. I got I to gotta film it. Well, I guess I could teach someone else oh, to film oh, that's it. that's right. You have to film it. Bigger three buds there. It dominated. I know. I actually, there's a video of a, a guy we know out of Minnesota, and he's got a big bud, and he hooked onto one and drug it around a little bit. It doesn't even give it a chance. It's kind of, but it'd be fun to do anyways. You know, why not? It would, it would just drag it in circles. Uh, that poor sled doesn't even have a chance. But the big brood, on the other hand, that actually would probably, I don't know if it could do a full pull. That's a very big question, so we're going to find if out. If you had a locker in the rear end so both tires can go, yeah, I think it wouldn't have a chance. I think it, or I think the sled wouldn't have a chance, but it's, it's questionable. Uh, it's hard to say. Yeah. You never know. We'll see how it goes when it gets there. Yeah, it could happen. But So there's good, probably going to be. Uh, we'll see how that goes. We might take them down the parade, too. We have a parade in town. Uh, Shelby's not a big town, but we do some fun stuff every now and then, so that'll be cool. So all you uh, local Big Bud people, bring them down to uh, Shelby, and we'll go through the fair and have the biggest Bud Parade. Br big Bud Parade, I guess you could say. <laughs> this guy says, weld, weld the diff, then. <coughs> yeah, why well, don't we, we could just, probably do that. Let's just weld the diff up. We could do that. We're on gravel. It'll be fine. Jam a couple bolts in the in the spider gears yeah. and weld them. Yeah. Uh, you guys will, should just have a Big Bud class for pulling against each other. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much gonna need to there's a couple other guys with buds in the area too you never know they might bring them down too we know somebody with a 730 horsepower bud nearby and that thing yeah that, that's impressive that would it's, it's a beautiful machine too it's got a qsx in it hey caitlin good to see you what's the date on the fair it's uh i the third week of july i want to say it's typically like the 24th Probably. 20th i actually haven't looked up the actual dates it's here. it's uh they usually do a rodeo first two days then one day they do uh or the last day typically they do a demolition derby with fireworks at the end um, but this year i think the plan is to do a rodeo two days demolition derby saturday and then tractor pull sunday with fireworks at the end so it should be for a good event mm -hmm. i'm hoping it's gonna be good our fair uh it's tough small community small towns you know our populations keep getting smaller and smaller and money goes further and further away and when the horse racing kind of died off, gambling kind of died off, all that stuff, you know, the fairs just slowly kind of get smaller and smaller. So uh, this is exciting to see this happen to the Shelby Fair. It's actually called the Tri-County Fair. I shouldn't be calling it the Shelby Fair because it's actually a Tri-County Fair. There's three counties that go together on it. But typically it's held in Shelby, <laughs> and it's Shelby does most of the work for it, it seems like. so. But, yeah, it is a Tri-County Fair. So you can look that up. Okay, I think that's what they so call it the Tri-County Fair. So it's 722. That's the date. 722 so 22nd yeah, of july what, that's what i'm seeing right here i could be wrong but it says uh shelby uh yeah. 722 i think that's right and with our uh with our spring seeding so late this year lot, usually we're cutting peas around that time so we just don't have time to think about doing something like this but this year because it's so late and we normally would have been unseeding peas right now there's a good chance everything's gonna get pushed back two three four weeks so if they do uh we'll have time to go down there so yeah that'd be fun okay what else Planting while watching them. Awesome. <laughs> nice. A demolition derby. That sounds like heaven. Demolition derbies are a lot of fun. Last year wasn't so good. Last year didn't go over if very well. If you ever well. get a chance to be in one, you better do it. Yeah, demolition derbies. It's so much fun. They're pretty fun. He's been in three? Yeah, I did three. Never he's, one. He's been in three of them. Yeah, he's always had first, bad luck. He's first been, two weren't too bad. The second one, or the third one was... Yeah. yeah, it he's, was bad. He's built good cars, but <laughs> the, it's always something that just shouldn't happen happens. And well, I wouldn't say good cars because they didn't last. Well, I guess they didn't last, yeah. <laughs> but it was still fun in the moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. It, uh, yeah. It's like you're, you're a kid in a candy store where you finally get to slam into somebody and they're not going to sue you. Yeah. And they, in fact, slam into you. And it's like the best feeling in the world. Except for the next day when you have to take a couple, a leave in Advil and, you know, 
That, that, you, you feel a little bit the next day, but yeah. it's not too bad. Definitely, yeah. But anyways, enough of that. So, so what else do we got? Um, well, we're about an hour and 30 minutes in, guys. Uh, I think uh, I think it's probably time to call it quits. Um, we appreciate you all being with us. What is where we at? We got 300 some of you right now. We had up to about 700 at one time, I think. We That's appreciate uh, uh, appreciate all you guys, and uh, without you, you wouldn't be seeing a lot of this. And yep. uh, so we thank you for all that you guys do. Danny Franks, appreciate it, man. Uh, Big Brute was so far a success. Uh, we still have some work to do, as you guys could see the hydraulic pressure shot up there. There's a bunch of little things. It's got it's got to get some field time. You can't really mm -hmm. fine tune until you get in the field. So we got more stuff to do, but uh, when the day comes. Uh, it will be ready to roll, and it's probably gonna get some work not long because I bet you we're gonna be in the field. So, but it could uh, be spraying pretty soon. But again, yep, I'm Nick Welker, Scott Welker. I've been nicknamed Hollywood by you guys. This is a uh, leg arms by you guys, and uh, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, even, and then of course YouTube. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Please subscribe to the Facebook and and uh, Instagram if you got it. And then I'll just keep throwing content up there, and you guys will hopefully enjoy it. So. Uh, it's been good. So, anyways, uh, okay. Well, appreciate it, guys. Uh, glad you uh, so far approve of what we did, and uh, I hope yeah. uh, I hope it lasts for quite a long time. Yeah, thank you for being a part of the big brute. <clears throat> there he is, right there, just hanging out, just just waiting for someone to come turn the key. If one of you guys would just come and turn it on, you know, he'd be happy. Look at those tires in the back. It looks like it just wants to. <laughs> it looks like a dragster. Now, just envision this setup right here, just like this, with a sled on the back pulling down a tractor pulse, rolling coal. Yeah, I think it might need to happen. So, and there's a pretty sight for you. There we go. They're all hanging out. We're a little obsessive of these things. That's why we built one. So, thanks again, big equipment. Ron Harmon for giving us the hood. That was uh, a big time saver, saved us a lot of time and hassle making it, and it made it authentic. And the fact that it is a big bud hood makes it that much more special. And uh, Thomas Lights from LarsonLights.com, the, the, all the lights on this. You guys, it's, it's still kind of lighter right now, but when it gets darker, and I'll show you guys sometime at night, those lights are so bright. And those kind of lights are going to go on that bud here soon. That doesn't have LEDs yet, and it's going to get them. So, and then of course Triangle Leg Services uh, out of Fort Benton. Those guys are on top of the new technology for precision egg, uh, blockage monitors, guidance systems, all of it. So if you're in the market, you want to equip a tractor like say that old uh, 4520 back there with an auto steer, talk to them. They will get you set up, and they set us up, and it so far it's running really good. It's going to be a nice system. So all right, everybody, I'm going to end it on this. We'll leave it right on that for the closing shot. It's just so pretty. Okay. See you guys. Have a good one. God bless. And uh, eventually here we'll have a new live stream. But it could be a couple days. We'll see how it goes. Next week you never know what comes. So later.